one of the things that I've been trying to lay out clearly is that life is hard. It's tainted by malevolence and betrayal. That can make you bitter. You need a meaning to offset that. Where's the meaning to be found? Not in rights, not in impulsive pleasure, but in responsibility. You take responsibility for yourself, so you take care of yourself. If you're good at it, you, can, you have some excess left over to take care of your family. If you're good at both of those, then you have some excess left over to take care of your community. Those are heavy burdens. You pick up the burdens, you find that's meaningful. The best way to pick up the burden is to continually improve yourself. And that's where the meaning is to be found. And so that meaning is in the continual self-transcendence. That's letting your old self die and the new self be reborn. Even if things are going really well for you now, there's going to be a time in the future where things are rough. You know, you're going to be ill. Family member's going to be ill. A dream is going to fall apart. You're going to be, you're going to be uh, uh, uncertain about your employment status. Like the, the flood is coming, right? The apocalypse is coming. It's always the case in life. And you have to be prepared for it. And the question is how to prepare for it. And the answer to that is to find a way of being that works even under the direst of circumstances. That's the issue. You've got the possibility to slowly raise yourself out of the mire. You've got the, the possibility to do just what the fighter does when he's defeated, which is to say, well, regardless of the circumstances that might have led to my defeat, there's no time to whine about it. This is a time to take stock of what I did wrong so that I could improve it into the future. And that's the right attitude. The point is your best strategic position is how am I insufficient and how can I rectify that? That's what you've got. And the thing is, you are insufficient and you could rectify it. Both of those are within your grasp. So it's very necessary to understand that this is why, you know, I've been stressing this idea of personal responsibility. It's like, well, personal responsibility is to compete with yourself, is to be slightly better than yourself the next day. Yes. And it better in some way that you can actually manage. And that's humility. If you aim low enough, it's like, well, I don't know how to start improving my life. Someone might say that. And I would say, well, you're not aiming low enough. There's something you could do that you are regarding as trivial that, that, that you could do, that you would do, that would result in an actual improvement. But it's not a big enough improvement for you. So you won't lower yourself enough to take the opportunity. Aim low. And I, I don't mean don't aim. And I don't mean don't aim up. But you have to accept the fact that you can set yourself a goal that you can attain. And there's not going to be much glory in it to begin with. Because if you're not in very good shape, the goal that you could, could attain tomorrow isn't very glorious. But it, it's a hell of a lot better than nothing, and it beats the hell out of bitterness, and it's way better than blaming someone else. It's way less dangerous. And you could do it. There's a statement in the New Testament, to those who have everything, more will be given. From those who have nothing, everything will be taken. It's like what's very pessimistic in some sense, because it means that as you start to fail, you fail more and more rapidly. But it also means that as you start to succeed, you succeed more and more rapidly. And so you take an incremental step, and, well, now you can lift... 55 pounds instead of 52.5 pounds you think well what the hell is that it's like it's one step on a very long journey and so it's it and it starts to compound on you so a small step today means puts you in a position to take a slightly bigger step the next day and then that puts you in a position to take a slightly bigger step the next day you do that for two or three years man you're starting to stride you know and i have so many people coming up to me now they say look i mean I've been listening to your lectures, and I've been developing a vision for my life, and I've been trying to take responsibility, and I've been trying to tell the truth, and things are way better. And so that's absolutely perfect. It's, it's, it's the right way forward as far as I'm concerned. And those are people who, they took stock of themselves. They said, I'm in a dark place, and I'm a dark person, and here's some things that this dark person in this dark place could do, little things that they could actually do. I'll clean up my damn room. I'll make my bed. I've had... I don't know how many people have come and told me. It's so strange. They said, well, I started making my bed, and that made all the difference. It's like, well, yeah, you decided to aim up, man. And the first concrete instantiation of that was that you made your bed. And you think, well, that's nothing heroic. It's like, no, but aiming up is heroic. That's something. And then l lowering yourself to the point where you're not above the mess in your room. You know, you're not superordinate to that. You lower yourself so that you straighten up. You, you're grateful for what you have right in front of you, and you take care of it, and you put it in order. It's like all of a sudden things start to get better. And it's so wonderful to be doing this. I talk to about 150 people a night. We never talk about anything political. It's always this. I wasn't doing very well. 
I'm putting my life together. I'm getting along better with my father. I'm getting along better with my wife. I'm getting along better with my kids. I've got some meaning in my life. Thanks a lot. It's way better. It's like, yes, that's, that's the right thing. Well, the self-esteem movements and all of that will accept yourself the way you are. It's like, mm, no, because you need a trajectory. And one of the things that, that I think, one of the reasons that audiences are responding to what I've been saying in my lectures and what I've been writing about is that I don't tell people that they're okay the way they are. No, I say, no, no, you could be way more than you are. And they're relieved about that, you see, because if you're in a dark and terrible place and someone says you're okay the way you are, then you don't know what to do about that. It's right. like, no, I'm not. I'm, right. having a, I'm having a terrible time and I'm hopeless. You're okay the way you are. Well, then what? what? That's it? That's it? That's where I am? And what do you want to tell a young person? You're 17. You're okay the way you are. It's like, no, you're not. you got 60 years to be better. And you could be way better. You could be incomparably better across multiple dimensions. And in pursuing that better, that's where you'll find the meaning in your life. And that will give you the antidote to the suffering. But you have to import, impose order. People have asked me in my book why I wrote it as an antidote to chaos, you know, because, well, there isn't anything technically wrong with chaos. Chaos is a place of great potential. Well, the question is, what's the proper, what's the proper balance between chaos and order? Chaos, potential, and order. Um, well, the answer is, look, when you're a kid, you're all potential. It's chaotic potential. It can manifest itself in any number of ways. And you, you, maybe you don't want to give that up. So you're like Peter Pan. You want to be a kid forever because you don't want to give up the potential. And you look out in the world and all you see are Captain Hooks, you know, who've lost a hand, who are chased by death because that's the clock and the crocodile. It's already got a taste of him. He's terrified by death and he's a tyrant. Well, I don't want to grow up to be that. So I won't be disciplined at all. Well, that's no good. Because the way the potential transforms itself into actuality is through discipline. And so then you, as you said, this is the trick though. You have to pick a path of discipline. Whether what path of discipline you have to pick is a different issue. You have to discipline yourself. And the issue is, well, how? That's not really the relevant question. You can pick a disciplinary path. That's why I often tell my clients, especially young people, they say, well, I don't know what to do. It's like, that's okay. Nobody does. Go do something. Do the best thing that you can think of. Put the best plan you have into practice. It's not going to be perfect and it will change along the way, but it will change partly because you become disciplined pursuing the path. And as you become disciplined, you become wiser. And as you become wiser, you become able to formulate better and better plans. So you can start vaguely and confused and develop a plan that's not so great and you start to implement it. And then you, you, you accrue incremental wisdom as you implement your flawed plan. And that enables you to fix the plan. Imagine you only got a hundred, you only have a hundred thousand dollars to go buy a house. You aren't your problems. Well, you are. You're most fundamentally that which, if it confronts its problems, can solve them. And that's the hero myth in a, in a, in a nutshell, by the way. The hero is the person who confronts horrible, chaotic potential and tames it and makes something of it, right? That's the, that's the fundamental human story. But the problem is, is that you have to face what you don't want to face in order to fix it. Yeah. And, and so you look at all the things about yourself that need to be burned off, that need to be dispensed with. And that man, especially at the beginning, especially if you're screwed up, that might be like 95% of you just has to go up in flames. And it's painful. Even some of that stuff that you have to burn off doesn't want to die. And it'll scream in agony while you're burning it off. It's not pleasant. But if you know that you're the thing that can transcend your problems, most fundamentally, if you know you're the thing that if it faces the problems can transcend them, then you have the faith that would enable you to take stock of who you are. We had people write about their ideal future. 